Good evening YouTube. Welcome to a get ready for bed flow. We will be using a bolster or pillows if you have and blocks but if you don't have blocks be creative with what you've got in the house and this is going to be a wind down sequence for getting ready for bed for a good night's sleep and we're going to go through positions which really help with insomnia and just help you completely switch off from the day. So let's get started. Okay, so let's start in a nice supported child's pose using the bolster. So I'm going to come into a nice wide leg here with my big toes touching and knees wide. And then I'm going to place the bolster or you can use blocks and pillows on top to create kind of mound for yourself here. And we're just giving whatever it is you have for support a nice big hug. Alternatively, if you prefer, you can also do this without the support too. And just closing the eyes, melting here and relaxing. Letting anything go from the day. Now is a time where we leave anything behind. We just come into the present moment as we prepare for a good night's sleep. Hmm. And then taking three deep breaths, we're gonna sigh it out, not being afraid or shy to make any noise here. Another two, deep inhale. Let it go. Last one, inhale. Exhale, release. Feel as the shoulders, the spine, everything just starts to melt and relax with the exhale. And just enjoying this position, enjoying this restorative pose, where we're not trying to push ourselves too hard here. And then if your face is to one side, feel free to then change it over to the other side, just to feel even in the neck. I'm going to stay facing you. Let's just stay here for a little while longer and enjoy the peace and quiet. <laughs> and just congratulate yourself for getting on your mat today. You could be using this time to watch TV, <laughs> which can be very tempting, but this can be a lot more effective if we're looking for a good night's sleep, if we're looking to wind down. And slowly coming up, although I could stay there for hours. Releasing the bolster out to the side and coming onto your tabletop. And let's take some cat cows here. Inhale to arch. Exhale round, push the floor away. Inhale, arch. Exhale round. Inhale, arch. Exhale round. Let's do one more. Inhale arch. Exhale round. Back to center. And we're going to come into a pigeon side, a pigeon side, a pigeon pose on the right side. And feel free to use as many props as you want here. So I'm going to use a prop because I want this to be more restorative and I want to be able to relax. So I'm going to place my blocks here and then bringing that right knee forward. So if you haven't done pigeon before, we want to bring that right knee towards the right wrist and 
Ideally, we're looking for kind of a 90 degree angle-ish, but if this is your first time, or if you're in very tight in the hip flexors, then that's really not gonna be available, then honestly, here is fine. The main thing we don't want to do is bring all the weight into our right side. We wanna keep our hips nice and level. So, in order to support that even more today, I'm going to bring my bolster underneath my right hip, or you can use a pillow or a block even, to support me. Make sure that back leg and foot is nice and straight. And then when you feel ready, you can come down onto the forearms if that's available. I'm gonna use my blocks again because I just want as much support as possible here. I don't wanna be overstretching. I just want to be able to sink into the pose. So getting nice and comfortable, or however comfortable you can because I know that it can feel quite intense, especially when we first come into it. So. We want to just really focus on the breath and focus on that feeling of letting go. Nice deep breaths, sending that inhale straight into our hips. As you exhale, feel the tension drift away from the body. Notice anywhere in the body where you might be holding on to unnecessary tension. So we tend to lock our jaws. Try to release the mouth, release the jaw, maybe move it around. Release the shoulders if you can. And try to let go in as many areas of the body as you can right now. And then slowly coming up, just going to move my blocks away and I'm going to move my bolster out the way and then we're gonna turn all the way onto the right side. Oop, all the way, now this doesn't have to look graceful. So you're now in this position in a wide leg stance but the right foot is into the left thigh. And then you're going to walk the left hand down towards the foot, reach the right hand up and over. So I'm gonna look like I'm doing it the opposite way to you because I'm not mirroring you. So just be mindful of that. Looking up to your right fingers and feel that opening in the side body on the right side. Breathing space into the rib cage, feeling that right rib cage expand as you breathe in and contract as you breathe out. And then as you come up, inhale, placing that right hand down on the floor and you're going to lift up, using the momentum in that left arm to reach up, pushing the hips forward and looking back towards the hand. And then as you exhale, we're gonna come back down into that side stretch. And we're gonna move with the breath here. So we're going to inhale up. Exhale. Try to slow down the breath. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. and coming all the way back up, beautiful. Turning into tabletop. And we're gonna come and do the same poses on the other side. So pigeon on the left side. So I'm going to turn around so that you can see me when I come to do the other position. So taking whichever variation you did on the other side that works for you. Now I'm definitely much more tight on this side. So you can feel it a lot more. Getting nice and comfortable and using whichever support you need. Meeting me there. Again. 
bringing your full attention and awareness to your breath. Full deep inhales, and full exhales. Letting all the air completely empty out your lungs before you move on to your next inhale. Releasing unnecessary tension in other parts of the body. Notice where you're holding on right now. And coming up, as you can tell by the sound of my toddler downstairs, I'm not doing this in the evening, I wish I was, but I'm filming for you in the day. And releasing the blocks and turning all the way around, swiveling. Whoop. Left sole of the foot into the right thigh. Right foot is flexed, reaching that right hand down as you reach up and over. Expanding in the left rib cage, looking up towards the left fingers. And Reaching the arm down, left arm down on the floor, right arm reaches up as we inhale. Looking back towards the hand, exhale. Feeling into that side stretch again. Two more here. Inhale up. Exhale. Slowing the breath down. Inhale. Exhale. And coming up and then we're going to bring both of the legs together to take Paschimottanasana. So feet are flexing up towards the sky. Inhale, reach the arms up. Lengthen and then exhale, fold. And instead of really thinking about finding that length, just allow the upper body to surrender down. Allow it to round. Allow the neck to just fall heavy. Maybe you keep a slight bend in the knees. If you have really tight hamstrings, that's perfectly okay. We really want to focus on finding as much relaxation in the poses as possible. And that way our muscles open and release tension gently and mindfully without us forcing anything. Taking some full deep breaths here. And coming nice and slow up to a seated position. And then let's cross the left leg over the right. Bring the left arm behind you and hug that left leg into the right elbow crease, looking back over the shoulder. Taking a nice gentle twist here. Decompressing the spine. and then change over to the other side. Bending the right leg, crossing it over, hugging into the left elbow, and twisting over the right shoulder. Try to keep that left foot flexed.
and release. Good. Shaking out the legs. Taking a final, we've got two postures left, but we'll take a Sukta Baddha Konasana, bringing the soles of the feet together. And then reaching the spine nice and tall as you inhale. And then exhale, just again allowing that rounding of the spine. All this rounding is okay because we're going to take a nice counter pose as our final posture where we open the chest and open the heart space. So just allow for this rounding. Allow for this heaviness in the upper body. And slowly coming up. Bringing the knees together and using either the bolster, blocks or whatever you have if you like. I'm going to place it just by my lower spine and come to lie back in our final Shavasana. But this is such a beautiful way to finish a practice because it really allows everything to open in the collarbone, in the chest. Close the eyes down and just allow the breath to flow in and out. Keeping the mind on the breath and on the body. Feeling every part of the body as it becomes heavy and grounded into the earth. Allowing all ten toes to relax. Noticing any tingling sensation in the soles of your feet. Notice the ankles become heavy as they fall away from each other. Bringing your awareness to your shins, your calves, your knees, your thighs, your hips, your pelvis, your abdomen, and each vertebra of your spine. your ribs and your chest, the shoulder blades become heavy, your arms, hands and fingers, your jaw, your mouth, the cheeks, nose, eyes and forehead. And start to visualize a yellow light beaming from your heart center as it travels up and feel, fills the room around you. I'm going to leave that visualization with you. Again, as always, feeling free to stay here for as long as you need. And I hope that this helped, helps you get a restful night's sleep. I hope it helped you wind down from the day. And I will see you in the next practice. Thank you.